Hello everybody, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Monday, February 11, 2013, and this will be your last update on the rocket stove because I am now ready to declare the Zero Fossil Fuel rocket stove done. Uh, in the last video, you saw that I was talking about the possibility of adding a fresh air inlet for the firebox. As you can see in uh, this photograph right here, I have added the firebox. I drilled a three inch hole through the floor. I was quite surprised to find out that it is two layers of three quarter inch five ply plywood, um, which was a pleasant surprise. The three inch vent pipe comes up to the side of the collar that surrounds the top of the firebox and the air is simply directed into the opening of the firebox as the stove creates a negative pressure inside the workshop. Um, none of that air ends up in the workshop because all of it just collects inside that little shroud around the top of the firebox. Over here I've created a little trowel to clean out the ashes inside the firebox and uh, it's just cut from a piece of aluminum flashing that uh, I used on the uh, for something else on the rocket stove to gain access to it all I simply do is uh, uh, slide the top of this collar off it just it just lifts right off of the firebox and then there are three wing nuts that will come off the front that removes this plate I slide the front brick out and then I can take my little trowel and just reach inside all the way to the end, push down and scoop it out. This little tin can right here represents three days worth of ash that was allowed to build up in the horizontal burn chamber and then get cleaned out after three days of burning wood. It is only about a third full so I would say that I would get at least a week worth of burning before I could actually fill this can. But you do want to clean it out every now and then because it does, of course, as it builds up, create a restriction in the burn tunnel. You will also notice that I have added fins around the perimeter of the top of the tank. These fins add an additional 700 square inches of heat dissipating surface area that allows the heat exchange to enter to get into the room and keeps the rest of the system much cooler than it used to be. Uh, by adding these fins, which are again pieces of aluminum drip edge um, that were spray painted black, I ground uh, the, the corners to allow the um, stainless steel banding to and clamps to slip through and clamp to the tank uh, by adding these fins whereas I was able to at one point get the top of this tank as hot as 700 degrees now it, it, I have a very difficult time getting the top of this tank ho any hotter than 500 degrees Fahrenheit typical operating temperatures are someplace in the mid 400s uh, for the uh, for the top of the tank right now and then the rest of the heat is being dissipated by these fins before it can even get further down also adding the fins decreased my flu temperatures by 40 degrees across the board so the uh, the heat exchange efficiency of the stove is phenomenal right now uh, I'm very happy with the way it's performing I'm not going to be doing any more modifications to the stove uh, any, in a, any other major modifications but a couple of things I did want to show you at this point um, when I shut the stove down what I was doing before was I was simply taking this metal plate and placing it on top of the uh, shroud and allowing the cold air to continue to enter and exit out the flue because there was a continuous draft being created but by doing so even after the even after the flame burned out this thing would cool down in 20 minutes I mean it, it would, I could touch it after 20 minutes and that means that uh, because of the rapid heat uh, the rapid air exchange coming up from the floor through the riser down the tank and out it was cooling off in 20 minutes and after that it's no longer releasing any heat into the room so what I did was I created a little, uh, I cut a little cinder block, a little, little piece of uh, paving brick, and around the edge I glued another piece of this fiberglass rope that's used around the doors for, glasses, for glass in fireplaces, 
and then I simply take this and set it on top of the firebox inside the inside the little metal shroud which seals up the burn chamber. This prevents any uh, any cold air from entering the firebox and cooling down the rocket stove prematurely so that whatever heat is built up in the rocket stove, in the mass of the rocket stove, continues to release into the room long after I shut the thing down. This thing is still releasing heat two, three hours after I put the cap on the, on the firebox. So that's great. And then I've, not, not only do I put this on, on the uh, top of the firebox to cap off that, but then I also at, put the plate on top like that. And that prevents any air coming into the room from the three inch vent pipe that's coming up through the floor. And uh, that's really about it. It's, it's done. Uh, I will be posting plans at altenergy.org. For those of you who subscribe to my Twitter feed, you've already seen the plans because uh, I took a, uh, a, a scan of the drawing that I created with all of the critical dimensions on it and I sent that out as a, as a picture attachment on one of my tweets. So if you would like to see the plans right now, you can go to my Twitter page and look up some of the photos that I've posted recently on the rocket stove and you'll see those plans. And while you're on my Twitter page, why not just click the follow me button and follow me on Twitter so that anytime I do post something to Twitter, believe me, I don't, I don't post a lot of nonsense to Twitter, uh, but I do post significant uh, updates to the projects that I'm working on. And uh, by following me on Twitter, that is a really good way to know right away when something important has happened. Um, the stove is done. I hope some of you uh, will be inspired to at least try a project like this yourself. It was a lot of fun. And uh, if for those of you in the permaculture community, if any of you would like me to actually bring this out to a permaculture event to demonstrate it to your visitors and to, to the people who, uh, who come to your event, I would be happy to do so. Please contact me at zerofossilfuel at gmail.com. I might even consider demonstrating it for events that are sponsored by the permies.com permaculture prima donnas, so long as they have first had a heaping helping of humble pie. And uh, if they can swallow their pride a little bit and recognize that the design of the rocket stove is not fixed or engraved in stone, I would be happy to bring this out and maybe even show it at one of their events. So anyway, that's all for now. Zero Fossil Fuel from the workshop. Thank you all for watching. Please comment, rate, share, and subscribe to my channel and my Twitter feed. Everyone take care. Peace. All right, so here's a walk down to the shed after the blizzard of 2013 in February. 23 inches of snow at Zero Labs. Walking down through the grove pine trees from the dreams, recurring dreams of my youth. Thank goodness for the snowblower, that's all I can say. And here we are. Nice, toasty, warm. Workshop. Rocket stove is cooking away. Making a nice, nice rockety sound. Now, lots of nice heat with those extra heat sink fins.